Welcome to Making Stuff Up, the podcast by the Quinney Arts Council team, where we talk to all kinds of creators about how they got interested in making stuff up. You're here with your hosts, Cody and Heather. This week, we're talking to Jody Cooper and Holly Duar about Belleville's Downtown Dock Fest coming up in March. Um, Jody and Holly, can you guys introduce yourself a little bit? Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm Holly Duar, and I'm the, qu- I'm the chair of the film festival and have been for about six years now, um, but been with the festival since uh, after the first year, straight through, so in a um, number of different roles. And I'm also the um, manager of public service at the Belleville Public Library and the John M. Parrott Art Gallery. That's my day job. <laughs> cool. And I'm uh, Jody Cooper. I'm the festival coordinator for Belleville Downtown Dock Fest. And prior to that, I was on the DocFest committee for several years and just really love uh, documentary films, so I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Um, So we're going to play a little bit of a lightning round just to break the ice and make everything uh, fun. Completely not film related, just just silliness to get us talking. Yeah. Um, So are you guys glass half full people or glass half empty? (laughs) <laughs> that's a good one I'm like a pessimistic optimist <laughs> I like to be really like realistic about things but I also like to see the bright side of things so I don't know I like I like to see that there's water in the glass I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I'm a half full I'm always thinking it's going to be better <laughs> we're going to do better it's going to be great <laughs> So yeah, I'm really a, a bit of an optimist. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. I like a, a glass half full, and then I love to figure out what else can we throw in it to keep filling it up. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm definitely a realist too. I'm like, there's water in that glass. I can see it, but I don't know which direction we're going. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good mix. That's a good balance. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what about cheese or chocolate? Corn, you're killing me. <laughs> I know <laughs> it's a tough one. <laughs> Oh, chocolate flavored cheese? Oh, <laughs> haven't tried that. <laughs> cheese flavored yeah. chocolate? Yep. Uh, probably cheese. I can't give up cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah, cheese is life. <laughs> yeah, Very I'm with important. you. Yeah, I think before having kids, it was chocolate, but my taste buds have changed and it's. Oh, it's cheese like now. It really is. But I'm not hugely adventurous with cheese. I like an extra old or a soft goat cheese. What kind of cheese do you like? Oh, I like Cambenzola is my favorite mm. cheese. I like feta cheese. I don't think, I, I really don't like smoked cheese. It's nothing no. like that. But everything else, I'm good. <laughs> oh, we'll pass those to Holly. Okay, so you just sent all that smoked cheese to me. <laughs> I love the smoked cheese. Um, and then I also like a spiced Gouda or... Yeah, anything like that. Cody, you got to get in on this. This is a cheesy table because I'm also a cheese person. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. hands down. If that was the only food that was available to live on for the rest of time, that would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> get you through. All right. Um, zombies or vampires? Zombies, 100%. I can answer that one easy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I'm vampires, <laughs> and it's all the literature about vampires. <laughs> That's a bit of a difference. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm butterflies and ballerinas. <laughs> I can't go there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not the See, dark side. <laughs> I'm a vampire person. I mean, I'm the color of a ghost that was scared. So I have to be with my people, and that oh. is that's a vampire. <laughs> that's great. Oh, I'm putting you in the butterfly categ- <laughs> category. <laughs> Okay, morning or night? I'm a night person. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> is that yeah. related to the film, the passion for film as well? Do you think they go hand in hand or am I just Definitely reaching? Definitely working on the film festival at <laughs> night every night. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be able to stay up late <laughs> and keep working. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and I just uh, well, I need like 12 cups of coffee just to feel like a human, and so that takes me till about noon, and then I feel like I get very productive from there on out. Oh, that's good. What about you, Cody? <laughs> By force of hobby, I am a night person, but I mean, if I could sleep 23 hours a day like a cat, I would do that, but yeah, I, I act, so that does require me to be up at night sometimes. Yeah, I think I'm the odd person out because... 
I I get tired at night and I'm in my cozy space and when I'm cozy I fall asleep and I, I like a, a good morning with a beautiful s- uh, sunrise and just the calmness before the storm, I think. <laughs> Do you guys like comedians in serious films or serious actors in comedy films? See, I made it a little movie related. Ooh, good. That is interesting. I can think of great examples of both. Um, oh, throw them out there. Let's discuss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was thinking of like uh, normal people is that what it's called uh it's got like seth rogan and all kinds of and i just i love that it's like a really serious topic Mm -hmm. um but but it has these comedy actors in it yeah regular actors and comedy films i think you see that more often because it's like the straight man kind of thing in a comedy so i'm gonna go comedians in in serious films because that's always like an interesting move for me Mm mm-hmm yeah, I think I go with that as well. It just sort of, um, it, that always makes it interesting when you're watching a more serious film and then you get that element of comedy in there, and I like that. There's a few performances um, by Robin Williams in serious movies that like will rip your heart out. They're so, so powerful. So I think comedians um, playing serious, it's a side that you don't often see, but they're, I mean, they're very tilt talented performer so that's for me four for four i'm the same Mm -hmm. i'm with you on that one pen or pencil oh pen definitely Mm -hmm. (laughs) i like being a racer so pencil okay (laughs) pen but like very specific pen yes it's got to have a good feel and a nice line and then the paper quality makes the Mm -hmm. difference too so here i'm getting really (laughs) picky (laughs) wow and i'm so away from paper it's like (laughs) I mean, I have paper, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's always on the computer. So yeah, yeah, we do get stuck behind our screens. And I know Cody and I really, we have our old fashioned notebooks and it's, it's actually therapeutic to cross things out oh, yes. when yeah. we get them done. We don't need a fancy spreadsheet. Just let's cross it out. That is nice. But yeah. that's yeah. very much only while I'm at work. If I'm at home, I just dictate to Siri all the time. And oh, have, I didn't she know just takes that. My notes. Yeah, oh. she takes all of my notes at home. Um, we're at work. I need, I need to see it so that I know that I have to do it. But at home, I'm like, eh, Siri will tell me. And if she doesn't tell me, I don't need to remember. I scribble to-do lists everywhere, all over my house on scrap pieces of paper. I usually hand them to my children and then they can do the list. But. Siri tells me every Sunday at 2 p.m. Don't forget to sweep the floor. So yeah. oh. like basic life tasks. If it wasn't for her, would I be alive? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's, I need her. Groceries, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Oh, I'm going to catch up to my shopping list. You, know? <laughs> you can literally tell oh. your phone to remind you like pick up toilet paper when I'm near Walmart and it will pop up with a reminder what? when you're yeah. Oh, yeah. Learn more of this stuff. I, I think really I do too. It yeah. Would really <laughs> help. And for just booking appointments and stuff, you can just tell her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think yeah. I have to become friends with Siri now. And you can also give her different voices because mine is British because it does make me feel more important. Yeah. I think there's an Australian man in there too. Oh. I, <laughs> I'm going to look for that one. <laughs> All right, are you guys hot coffee people or iced coffee? Mm, hot, co- like I definitely like iced coffee in the summer, but being Canadian, <laughs> we don't get very much like really hot weather. So hot coffee, I can drink all year round. Oh yeah, hot coffee, no question. The cold just doesn't even rate with me. Yeah, <laughs> summer, <agree>. winter. <laughs> yeah, hot coffee, hot tea, and hot chocolate too. Mm-hmm. I'm an iced coffee person. I actually brew my own cold brew at home. I have like a little system um, and I do drink it all year round because um, the ice is in my veins at this point. So, <laughs> Life is short, so... Do what you love. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to date myself, but YOLO. Oh, <laughs> Okay. All right, one last one. Would you guys like to be able to pause time or rewind time? I guess pause because it's so short (laughs) and it goes so fast. So it would be nice, you know, in certain moments to kind of pause and be able to take in, you know, wherever you are for that extra, extra long time. Um, And that's more appealing to me. The only reason I would want to rewind is maybe to go back and, 
redo something, but I think the, the mistakes are what make us, despite being an eraser person. I don't want to mm. go back and change anything. <laughs> so keep moving forward, but, but pausing to take an extra minute would be nice. I love that answer. That's a good one. I think for me it's a rewind, though, because there's just so many great things that you can imagine yourself having, you know, that you could do all these other lives. And so it would give you that opportunity to do other stuff. So, yeah. Oh, they're both such good answers. I'm stuck in the middle now. But if I didn't listen to the answers and just went with my gut, I would say for me, it would be pause time because so much is always happening. And if we could pause it, we could take more of it in and just enjoy it more and reflect more on it with the rewind I'm pretty sure I'd end up making the same mistakes so (laughs) instead of reliving those mistakes I think I'll just pause the time you guys had really profound answers and I say pause time because then I would have more opportunities to nap (laughs) (laughs) thinking practical there like you know I could more time for awake things if I could just pause while I'm sleeping (laughs) it's actually really really (laughs) okay should we get on to our questions for today's podcast yeah so you guys touched on this a little bit in your intros but um how did you guys first become involved in DocFest? if you want to um i think i first became involved as as a filmmaker locally i had a friend who was on the committee and he reached out and said you know what we're always looking for for filmmakers this is something you'd be interested in um, and yeah, I love I love documentary, and I thought it was brilliant that we had this here to to have an audience um, and bring films locally. So I hopped on board. Yeah, for me, um, I had just uh, just made the move from Toronto to Belleville and joined the Belleville Public Library, and uh, I'd been interested in film before and involved in um, film purchasing for the library in Toronto Public. And uh, so I, the film festival hall had just happened the first year, and uh, 2012, and I got asked if I'd like to help out on the committee, and I thought, oh, that'd be a really cool way to meet some people and get involved in something, you know, a great volunteer opportunity, and it fit with my love of film, and so I, I got involved and haven't looked back. <laughs> Very cool. Who's? What are the coolest people you've met through? Oh, this experience. Uh, oh, you know, um, one of the people is, um, oh, I'm thinking of um, Alan Swig is really an unusual uh, filmmaker. I really respect his work and, uh, you know, we're, um, we connect on social media still and I always find his, um, what he's putting out there is interesting and thoughtful and he's just a really different character. So he's, he's one of the people I met and I think we've shown at least two of his films, and uh, again, I think they're really different. And I had an opportunity to interview him on a filmmaker's panel, and his answers were um, very different, uh, just a unique character. So that's one of the people I think was really has been really interesting to meet. Right on. What is it that you love about Docs? Oh, I really like the way that they take you into a world that you might never have an opportunity to experience. So they really broaden um, your 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 knowledge, and your they really uh, influence your thinking on a subject and make you maybe um, start to investigate it more. Uh, so I just think it's um, they delve deeper into topics that are often very interesting and ones that sometimes you wouldn't have even thought you would be keen on knowing more about and then you get into it and it's like oh wow I had no idea and so it just broadens your scope and yeah and I love the way they sometimes will really connect back to the community and that's also and spark change so yeah that's such a cool answer I just makes me think of that's why I love a good doc these days it's it really is it does broaden your scope and um introduces you to new subject matter like you said that you didn't know you might actually be interested in and want to learn more about jody do you want to expand on that that question oh, gosh. um i mean that was that was a great answer i i love docs i think because i'm a lifelong learner i love to learn um about new things and they just they do such a great job of storytelling being an engaging and kind of like zooming in you know that microscope you're you're really close to the subject in a way that you wouldn't necessarily get to be any other way and then you know the really good docs then they zoom you back out and they show you how that connects to 
the rest of the world, how that connects to what you're doing, even if it's in a completely different area. Um, and I love, I love that aspect of it is, is figuring out how it connects to us and, and our community here. I'm sidetracking just a little bit because it's because I heard you say learning new things. What's the most recent thing that you've learned new? <laughs> well, I'm a lifelong learner and a perpetual student, so I'm actually currently studying for um, a second master's degree. Right I'm on. Taking art therapy. Uh, so I'm learning a ton about uh, the history of art therapy in Canada right now, which is uh, really cool. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Right on. Holly, what about you? Oh, I'll tell you, I watched this documentary called Sirens, and uh, it's about these two musicians in um, Lebanon, and they're heavy metal. And I'm really, you know, I really didn't ever connect with heavy metal. But, oh my gosh, I learned so much about heavy metal, about Mm -hmm, music, mm -hmm. and about how it's created. And then it was really fascinating just to see their lives, because they're in Lebanon. Um, there are, you know, two young women who are um, kind of out there and everything, and especially for that society. So mm-hmm. you just sort of see the courage that they have. And yeah, and I, I kind of connected with the music in a way that I hadn't ever before and, and learned about that. And that That's was super cool. cool. And women in heavy metal as well, right? And now let's take a minute to thank one of the sponsors of the Quinty Arts Council, Loyalist College a small college that provides big opportunities, Loyalist graduates have the top employment rate in Ontario. Loyalist College and their program, Filmmaking, Television and Digital Content Creation, are partnered with the QAC and Belleville Downtown DocFest to premiere their student documentary films about the Quinty region. Um, As part of DocFest, you guys are holding like a gala event. Do you want to tell us a little more about that? Yeah, so our gala, we're so excited about. It's um, going to be amazing, and it's just wonderful to be returning to a live gala event. The community just responds so well to that. We are always have been sold out for our live event, and after two years of being virtual, we still had a music doc, and we still did a concert, and we had that available online on our broadcast platform and it was watched by everybody who got a pass but to be going back to live is amazing and we've got a great film and it's called okay the asd band and the really fun thing is well the film is just incredible and it's about four musicians and they're all on the autism autistic spectrum disorder and uh, they're wonderful working together Um, lots of really humorous moments, lots of really touching moments in the film. And then um, we're going to have them come on stage and do a concert for us. And their music is fantastic. And, um, you know, they played, uh, well, they're not, they haven't been together that long, but they played the CNE recently and they played Massey Hall. So we are very excited to have them coming and we just, yeah, it's special. I was reading about it online and I'm really excited about the event. Where is it happening? Oh, at the Empire Theatre. Yeah, we've been so fortunate to be able to do our galas at the Empire Theatre. It's such a beautiful setting. It, the capacity is great. It's a, I think it says so much about Belleville, just mm-hmm. the way that it's a beautiful historic building that was renovated. I grew up in Belleville and... I remember the Empire Theatre from those days and then the days that it was shuttered and I really think that um, Mark Rashad is, um, you know, to be commended for bringing the Empire Theatre back and making that available in downtown Belleville as a wonderful venue. Let's tell the audience the date as well because let's get that house full. Oh yeah, so we're March 3rd, Friday, March 3rd. That's when the gala is happening and then we'll have films all through the weekend, March 3rd to the 5th and we're showing films as well at the Belleville Theatre Guild and also at the John M. Parrott Art Gallery. So lots of films close by, people will be able to go between venues and I want to just mention as well, we're doing a school screening. So that's a free event for schools and we're going to be showing the OKASVD OK band film and then they're coming early so that they can do a Q&A with the students so oh, wow amazing. it's just what an incredible opportunity for so students to to be involved in it and for the band as well so cool yeah we're really looking forward to that having the the filmmaker and some of the band members calm down is an incredible um yeah opportunity for the students to ask questions about filmmaking and about you know being in the band so yeah it's very cool 
Mm-hmm. And where can the community buy tickets for and passes for the Doc Fest? Passes are, are on sale on our website, which is downtown Doc Fest. .ca, and at the top menu, uh, they'll see passes, and then they can select from the various options. We've got the in-person pass for the live festival weekend, and then we also have a full week of virtual films with our virtual festival. So that starts March 5th, and it runs to March 12th. So passes for both are currently available on, on the website. And as we get closer to the festival, then individual tickets will be available for those online films, and we may have some rush seats available for some person screenings as well right on so um the films that are virtual will they be the same ones that are in person as well or are are these two different a lot of them will be the same so if uh you know people have a preferred way if they really want to see the films on the big screen then they can come out and see them on the big screen or if they prefer to see them from the comfort of their own home then they've got the live uh the virtual screening option Um, So a lot of them are the same. There are a few that will be exclusive to in-person or exclusive to online. Uh, So it does um, maybe pay to to see a little bit of both if you're interested in catching all the films. And of course, there's just no way in one weekend to watch all 50 50 films. 50 (laughs) films. That's incredible. (laughs) That's incredible. And too, with the the virtual option, if you see it live and you want a second screening, Exactly. You're going to go for the virtual, which is really exciting. And um, is this the first year you've done the hybrid model? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Over uh, the past two years, we had moved to, to fully virtual. Um, and we recognized that that was an incredible way to grow our audience because now we're attracting uh, viewers from across Ontario. Uh, and so we have some dedicated uh, audience members that aren't necessarily from our community but love to uh, see the films that we're offering through the festival. So this year we're back to that in-person weekend, but then we thought, well, we'd love to keep going with the virtual as well. So we're doing both. Do you have a favorite film that you're excited to present? I know it's sort of, out of 50 films, I don't know if I'd be able to choose one. Uh, are there a few of them that you want to share with our audience? Oh, yeah. Can I say the Buffy St. Marie film? Oh, it's cool. It's wonderful. And we're going to show that on Saturday evening at the Empire Theatre. And we have um, the First Nations Technical Institute sponsored that film. They've sponsored some of our films in the past, and we have a great partnership there. We really appreciate their support. And the film is just um, wonderful because she's such an amazing activist, Mm -hmm. and she really, I think, connects with younger people coming up, and um, her music is amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're really, that's a great film. Yeah. Uh, for me, it is. It's it's really tough. I love them all for for different reasons. Some of them we've picked because they're just fun and amazing to watch, and some of them have really important important messages. I, I would almost. Yeah, I don't even know if I can pick, but I think what I love about our festival is we're going to have so many local films as well. And so really the local filmmaker spotlight that we have, and that's hosted by by Bay of Quinty. Um, I'm just so proud that that's part of our festival, and that's probably my favorite part. Very cool. I'm going to mention this one other film too. Okay. (laughs) It's uh, Crows Are White, and it's just such a different film. It's a really unique film. And it's about a um, uh, monastery in Japan, and uh, it's really unusual. They're very um, remote and very secluded group, and this filmmaker is trying to kind of work his way in there, so it's got great humor in it. And just, um, it's a, a feast for the eyes, both where they live and the, uh, just the, um, what they wear and the monastery itself. It's really a unique, interesting film. And it's always fun to have some films like that in there that are just like, you're not seeing this anywhere else. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Tell us more. <laughs> tell can us I more. I, you sure can, because I have to tell you, when I read online and I was reading little synopsis about different, the different shows, I thought, oh, I, I can't pick. There's just like, again, it comes back to what you were saying about learning something new and new subject matter. Even just reading about these synopsises just really brought my attention to this is a story I want to learn more about. Yeah, oh, and it's so great. 
I think one of my favorite ones this year is is actually about documentary filmmaking. So maybe as a filmmaker, that's why I love it. But I think anybody who loves documentary will be interested in this film. It's called Subject, and it dives into what it's like to be a documentary subject. What is it like to have your life portrayed in this way? Um, What are you know the goods, the bads, the uglies, the ethics? Um, it really it dives into it from so many different perspectives and it, it kind of goes back over the last decade and looks at some of those massive films that we've probably all seen. We've had them at the festival and it revisits um, these these characters and, and these people who've had their lives on display this way to see like where are they now? How has it impacted them? Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited to be showing that film at the festival. Awesome. The Quinney Arts Council is sponsoring a panel. Can you tell us, our audience, a little bit about that? Yeah, we are so excited. I think it's a testament to um, to the festival, to the reputation that it's built, to have so many incredible filmmakers wanting to come and be here with us over the weekend, to have their film screened, and to share about their process with us. Um, so we have award-winning filmmakers like Stacey Tenenbaum. Uh, she has had several docs here before, and this year her film Scrap will be playing. Uh, Jeannie, award-winning uh, filmmaker, um, Jeremiah Hayes, oh, yes. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes, yes. Uh, will be with us as well, um, and, and several other uh, filmmakers that are to be announced and confirmed. Um, and so that will be Friday afternoon, starting at 4. Uh, and yeah, we're super thankful to the Quinney Arts Council for sponsoring that, for enabling these filmmakers to come and participate this way, and we're excited to share that with the community. I'm excited to be there because I really love to hear artists talk about their craft because that's where the passion behind the art form is. And um, will those filmmakers have a chance to network throughout the weekend? Or are they just popping in for your panel and out doing other things? Oh, they'll definitely have a chance to network. And we do a... um a special filmmakers reception on Saturday evening and we invite uh, local filmmakers to be there as well and it's been really amazing to see that in the past just that connection say between somebody who's in the loyalist film and TV media program who's at the event their film is showing so their first time ever having a film screen before a live audience and then to be able to meet some of the incredible filmmakers who are established in the field and to see them get that opportunity to have a drink together and to talk. I One time at one of the receptions in the past, I saw this emerging filmmaker talking to an established filmmaker and you know he was like oh I'm going to give you this camera so I brought it with me you really need this it'll really help you and you know sure enough that weekend he gave this you know this young person a camera that was something he couldn't have afforded it's just um, and also just that kind of you can contact me if you're working on a project I'd like to hear what you're doing let's keep in touch that networking is so um, so valuable and something that we really uh, want to make happen. And we um, love to have the filmmakers stay for the weekend. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. just gives a, a bigger opportunity to have those discussions and for people to get a chance to, to connect. And, and that's so important. Yeah, I love that because there's that mentorship piece, right? There exactly. really is. And um, I think that's something that a lot of Belleville and maybe a lot of our audience um, is unaware of is there are lots of talented filmmakers in the area of Quincy. And we're looking at one of them right now, Jody. I know you're here to talk about DocFest, but (laughs) can you share a little bit about your journey as a filmmaker? Yeah, I I love stories. Ever since I was a little kid, I love stories. My mom was involved with the Theatre Guild here when I was young, and so I always sort of wanted to go into that kind of entertainment field. I wasn't entirely sure uh, in what aspect, Um, and I did a lot of work uh, with with charities and nonprofits um, throughout my young life and and, uh, early career as well. And so then it just felt like a great way to blend them with with documentary uh, filmmaking and that's kind of how I how I started is um, sharing some of the stories for the organizations that I worked with and uh, my husband and I both went to to Loyalist together and took the program there and yeah I just I really love that ability to you know like we said about docs to dive in to showcase a subject and and for a charity 
that can make all the difference is uh, allowing them to tell the story of the, w the work yeah. that they do. There's mm -hmm. just so much incredible work that goes on behind the scenes that we don't necessarily get to know about. We don't get to see the people that are being impacted or, you know, what how their lives have changed and all of that can come to life with the documentary and and so that's what uh, what originally brought me to it. Right on. Yeah. Um, so you guys have mentioned Loyalist students. So Loyalist will be part of the DocFest again this year? Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. We, uh, we have a wonderful partnership with them. This is probably now going on a decade that we've worked together with the Loyalist uh, film and television students. We also work with the PR and event management students there. Uh, and so the way that that process works is we come together and we do a pre-screening uh, at Loyalist of probably about eight to ten films uh, that the second year students have made there. They, they have a documentary film class and they make short docs in the community as part of their program. And so then they get to showcase the work that they do. And we bring on a panel of judges, the local filmmakers that we can take advantage of here and, and have their talent. Um, and so then they, they screen the films, they give the students live feedback, the audience members love it because they get to learn a little bit about the making of documentary, what kind of things a, a filmmaker might look for when assessing a film. And then at the end of that evening, we pick, or the, the judges pick, uh, the four top films. And then those are the films that get included into the festival. So that's an event that will happen at Loyalist uh, towards the end of February. So stay tuned Ooh, for details Keep them busy. That. Yeah, mm. we want to know all the details. And we want to share that with the Queenie Arts community. So awesome. make that's sure great. you fill us in. And we'll get that up on our events calendar listing. And um, and get it out to all of our subscribers. We have remarkable talent in this community. The filmmakers who are here, who are based here, it's, um, the work is so uh, varied and the quality is, is really right up there. I mean, I think about Sean Scally's work, bringing to life historical subjects from the community that really connect with people, making you know those stories that people don't know about. Um, Tess Gerard, her films are mm -hmm. beautiful. The cinematography is um, out of this world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Victor Cooper, and Victor Cooper, of course, his work, and um, Brock Kirby is another filmmaker, a local filmmaker. We have a lot of talent here. Angela Bell, and yeah, there's just a number I could go on. And it really um, is great to be able to showcase their work at the film festival. It's always wonderful to see them submit a film and and uh, bring that forward and present it and yeah holly you are such a wealth of knowledge with film and it's it's inspiring to hear you talk about it i think doc fest is very lucky uh -huh. to um have you running the running the show and um and it we is would be literally lost without her <laughs> it's incredible eh? yeah basketball. and it's so established now we need to do what we can as the arts council to get it out and um and like you mentioned too, with now the hybrid aspect of it, your audience is, is growing and um, I see this is just gonna keep going for years to come. It's definitely a real passion. I, I'm so fortunate to work with DocFest. It's given me so much. It's such a wonderful outlet and uh, it's, um, I, I have a great team and there's changes over the year. But oh, people, the dedication and the contribution has been remarkable. I've been really fortunate to work with uh, wonderful people over the years and um, just value that so much. Completely naive question, but um, is there a DocFest community across Ontario of different DocFest organizations? That is there a collegiality there? And is that another exciting component? Um, reaching out and networking amongst the doc fests. Yeah, there definitely. Um, so I'm thinking about organizations like Mano Media Arts Network of Ontario that we're members of. And uh, we really find that connecting opportunity to be so helpful. Um, I think it really came home to me during COVID where we started talking about things that none of us had ever dealt with before. So what broadcast platform are you going with? What is mm -hmm. that charging? What are your costs? Or are you doing, you know, just how are you doing with loading the films? Is it going? All of that kind of thing that we just was, it was brand new to us. And mm -hmm. so big learning curve, but being able to reach out to other people who were going through the same thing 
Um, and we really do connect with other film festivals across Ontario that are documentary film festivals. We try to always um, send somebody or to watch the films from the Sudbury F a Film Festival, Reframe. So, um, and then Doc Institute out of Toronto is also a big support for us. And Lyft is another organization that we're members of. So those are, are um, tremendously supportive and helpful for us. And when we're working on grants, that kind of thing, it um, helps to reach out and have that support. I want to mention the finale film. It's called Icebreaker, the 72 Summit series. And I have to admit, I'm not a big hockey fan, although <laughs> I, you know, I do go to games. It's dangerous to say that in Belleville. I know, it's really bad. <laughs> but we appreciate your honesty. Oh, the film is wonderful. So hockey fan or not, it's a really uh, moving film and about the 72 Summit Series, which was such a defining moment for Canadians and for hockey. And it just um, carried me right along. I was so interested. It's that Cold War period. And um, the people who are speaking in the film are, are so knowledgeable. It was really an eye-opener for me. I love that film. And it's, as I say, our finale film. And Jason Woods of Remax and also the Property Brothers are sponsoring that film. And they've been with us for about seven years now uh, oh, sponsoring okay. films. And just uh, very, very nice to have their help. That's wonderful. I'm so glad you mentioned that film because you may have just doubled your audience. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put it on Saturday night. That's what we were thinking. Yeah. And my husband was like, uh, that's hockey night. You don't want to put oh, that on Saturday Oh, that's funny. Night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Awesome. But. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, can you tell our audience where they can reach you guys online? Yeah, so I mean, they can reach us uh, on our social media at Downtown Doc Fest uh, on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and then, of course, our website, downtowndocfest.ca. Uh, we've got a, a newsletter where we share all of our film updates, all the films are posted to the website. And, of course, that's where they can buy festival passes, too. Yeah, just go to our website, downtowndocfest.ca, and you'll get all the information. And the e-newsletter really is a great way to keep current on what's happening and get all the news.